So we've had uh, Tom come down to pick his bike up. Now Tom was the lad that had the golden flash, the black golden flash. The bike came along or oh, some time ago here and uh, we looked at it and Alex and myself we said that really is not good. Uh, if I'll be honest with you it's one that I wouldn't normally take on. Tom's a really nice lad actually, quite shy. Um, we spoke about maybe Tom you can do something to camera. He wasn't over keen. I said well no worries. So what was the bike like? Um, the bike came to Tom through his dad. His dad had the bike some years ago, bought it from a dealer, didn't go, had issues with it. It did go but it had so many issues his dad gave up with it. It was stored in the garage for a long time. Tom wanted to get his hands on it so he bought the bike of his dad. Tried to do a few things himself, watched our channel, thought well I can approach Dave, maybe Dave can help me out with some of the jobs. So it turned up here and we looked at it there's so much wrong with it. Very quickly, crankshaft, the splines are worn on the crank. SRM, thanks SRM again, uh, they re-splined, they built the, the shaft back up and recut the splines. They've done the time inside bush, they ground the journals, so we had undersized shells for the con rods. Uh, we put a triumph clutch in it because the BSA clutch was absolutely shot. All the tin wear didn't fit properly, mud guards, back mud guard didn't fit, seat didn't fit, and all, everything was wrong, everything was gash, gearbox is terrible. So I took it on and we got it up together. Um, and Tom came down and is, now you'll see Tom with me here and we've done the handover and he rode it around the yard. He was really chuffed and he's been in contact. He, Took the bike home, he took it to his dad's, it was around the corner. His dad said, I want to go on that, and his dad's riding the bike down the road. It's a nice one to do. Now, what we've got over here is another BSA. It's not an A10, this one is an A7. The A7 was the, uh, the 500. This bike is, I can't remember the age of it, it's an earlier 50s bike, because the later one had the teardrop. This is round badge. I think it's like a 54, 55 maybe. Now this bike, um, what happened here, there was a, a friend of the family, I believe, that was restoring this bike, and he sadly passed away. And the bike really wasn't completely finished, and uh, it eventually came into the hands of um, the present customer who wanted to have the bike on the road. He managed to get it going for the guy that died who was doing the bike, he managed to ride it to the funeral but it had issues not charging, gear selection, a few other things, bad oil leaks. So it had the gaskets and the rocker box were leaking badly. We had no charge on the ammeter, which turns out to be the voltage regulator. Someone had, well, the chap had wired it up incorrectly. So we've now put a, a conventional box type voltage regulator in there. The clutch was a, um, BSA clutch dragging and all sorts of problems, so we put a Triumph clutch in here. Also, the gearbox out, you've got shots you'll see where we stripped out this box in situ and I found that the index was incorrect in the gearbox, so we sorted that all out. Um, now it's a nice bike, uh, we'll we're, we're do a start up on it, and uh, it's been standing for a few days, so hopefully it'll be alright. Now he's got the cutout for the mag, he's got as a switch down here. So I'm just remember to turn that on. Um, this one has got the choke on this one. On Tom's one, it had got that in the slide. And they will normally start without a choke, um, but probably when it's cold like it's not quite so easy. So hopefully, that should be. We'll get a little bit more of a tickle. 
that's it. These are very, very sweet engines. The 500, the stroke of the, the engine makes it very smooth. Now the A10 and, well the A7 and the A10, the 500 and the 650, the iron head were very quiet. This is a lovely quiet engine. The cylinder on here is a cast iron head. If you look at the Rocket Gold Star or something like a, a Shooting Star 500, it could be aluminium. But it's just a nice, nice um, low tune bike low tune engine, very rideable, decent mud guards, very underrated. A bike in a day that would be used as an everyday work bike, the 650 would make a very good sidecar bike. But this now, you know, the, the guy's going to have this back, Glenn his name, he's got a nice bike now, he'd be pleased with it. The thing about putting the Triumph clutch in this, we can pull the clutch in and select it into gear and it's just a joy. Then we can go back into neutral. And you, you know, with the BSA clutch you struggle. They, they always drag, but this is nice, I'll do it again. Clutch in, into gear, back into neutral. And before it wouldn't select from first, I'd go straight into second, it would go to neutral It would go to neutral and wouldn't go down because that's where the index was incorrect to mention before. It's so important that you build the box up properly. But this, this is a good example. It's quite nice when you ride one of these. I mean, I've, I'm into the RGS bikes and, you know, the um, road rockets, but something like a Flash or an A7, you've got a really good bike. It's a good, good club bike to ride as well, I think, the uh, motorcycle club. thing about these, I just turn it off, they're quite low compression so they're easy to start. We'll do another quick kick over on this. Compression. There's no effort in kick starting that bike at all. Side stand goes over a little bit of a way but it's fine. But yeah, I think you agree it's a nice machine. So in these boxes here, we've been here before, this is Rob Bayman's dad's old bike. This is the Matchless G11. Bit of a slow job, but we are getting there. Um, where we're at the moment, I showed you last time, I showed you some pumps that I acquired and needed an overhaul. Now these are the two pumps. They've been covered in oil now. Took these completely apart and rebuilt these and we haven't got anywhere in these bodies at all. They are really good. So we're lucky here. They are far better than what we had with the bike. So the pumps are done. So that's a feed and that's a return pump. And actually we're on the other way, I think. Uh, doesn't matter. Um, so the barrels, now the barrels we showed you were quite rusty inside. Now I've honed these out and there's no wear in these bores at all. I've coated this now with oil. We've also painted these barrels. They've been sprayed and put in the oven and baked. So that's ready. We've also, Rob's now got the crankshaft that we sent away to have it reground. Uh, the main journals, the center bearing. We managed to get some new con rods for it and we've got some new pistons. So probably in the next few months, Rob will have finished the cycle parts. He'll bring the rolling chassis down so then I can finish off the engine. Then we do the gearbox. I uh, get most of it done here because they're going to be little bits and pieces because the bike was stripped out 60 years ago, or well, 61 years ago by his dad and that's how it's been ever since. So a few little bits as we go along we may not find and we have to get through AJS Matches Club. So it is sort of moving very slowly but we will get there. So that's that one. I'll put those bits away in a moment. We'll now talk about where we are with the project bike, our bike. 
which it actually has moved on and the way we're doing this I think you're quite like so what I've done is I've I've blasted the barrel assembly and I honed the bores out there was no wear in these so there's no point having it rebored now the pistons that were in this I think we've shown before were very high compression with the modern fuels now there would be a tendency out of pinking a little bit with that type of high compression. You're not getting the high octane fuel like you used to. So I've got a good pair of lower compression pistons, the same size, so we're going to use these. They're quite good. They are good. So why not run it on lower compression? Cylinder head I haven't done much with. I've dropped the valves out. It needs a really good clean up. But I will change the valve, valve guides and I will cut the seats, probably put new valves in it, and we'll have that head done. Now, SRM, they're gonna help us out with the bottom end. We showed this before, it was quite mucky when we took it apart. We found, the first thing we found was the time inside bush, the crank you could move up and down. So it's gonna need the crank ground on that journal, a new time side bush up inside there you can see the old one I think you can see where the bush is we've got a crack in this inner casing so they're going to weld this up and this intermediate gear we have new bushes in there as well they've got all the equipment to do this and that is quite a mess so that will need to be done it also wants the big end journals ground and also the slow straps taken out and that really is what they, they're going to do for us. Now, what I've done here in the workshop, we had, I'll turn it around the other way, where we have the strap for the dynamo on the front, uh, it had sheared off the, the, the fixing here. So I've bored that out, that's been taken out now. And we've done some other work as well. I think one of the studs in the bottom was damaged. So I drilled that out. We put it in the mill and drilled it, and I put another stud in. But we're going to have an SRM plate on here, which has the, anti, the, um, the drain down when it wet sumps with a magnetic, magnetic plug. So I fit one of those on there. But I think we're going to stay with a finish like this. I've cleaned this up with a, with a pad, like I've done with uh, the Gold Star crankcase this morning. And... Um, so I can present it now to SRM in a clean state. We polished this in a cover up, but I think this will look quite nice when we've done this. So that's where we are with the engine. Now, I know we keep talking about the frame. So what we've done now, we have taken off the loops. We've taken off the lugs that hold the uh, footrests on and the exhaust. We also taken off that sidecar lug, which I was going to use for a pivot for the brake pedal. We've now put the foot rests in, which I got hold of second hand. We straighten these out, so we've got an idea what it's going to look like. So these are fairly straight, they'll be painted and new rubbers on obviously. But we want to run standard foot rests on here. So what we're going to do with the swing arm is we're on the standard, uh, I think we showed before, flash. You have the brake rod running through we're going to do that. We're going to convert the rod to work here, but that would be a nice setup. The gearbox is finished, so we're using our RRT2 gearbox, and we've put a standard cam plate in there. So it's been turned around the other way. So we still have the gears like I mentioned earlier, one up and three down. So it's quite nice, that gearbox. We've, we've made you know, good of all the parts we had there, so that's quite nice. We've put a new sprocket on here. This is quite sharp. I showed you before about the sprockets wearing. But I think we'll probably leave our engine plates like this. They're chrome. And it was chrome before. We might as well leave it. It's not bad finish. So we're making a little bit of headway. We want to get this painted really soon. And as I said before, we're going to run this Siamese exhaust system on here. But once we get the crankcase sorted out with SRM, we build the engine up. And when that frame has been painted, that can go back in the frame with the swing arm. And then we're going to do the build with a single seat. It looked quite nice. So we've got two major jobs on here. We've got Gold Star for a customer, and we've got our scrambler. 
street scrambler. So uh, yeah, it's quite a busy workshop at the moment. But two interesting jobs. I know people have, have mentioned to me they quite would like to see an RGS being built up. Well, basically that's what you got here. We've got the alley head on here. This is a road rocket engine. So any references to things we'll show people along the way on the build. So I think uh, that helped people. Like I know it's helping with this job. What are you doing, Pete? This is slot car racing, isn't it, Pete? Yeah, yeah. So I'm building my own purpose-built slot car track. So custom. <laughs> he's going to tell us about this because he's told me about this. This is pre-scale electrics. This is going right back, isn't it? Well, it ran at the same time. Oh, I did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a guy. Um, what was his name? Ken. He he built the first um, slot car track during the war, and he even made his own electric motor. Um, and then, obviously, this ran alongside Scale Electrics, but this was more for commercial. So big toy shops had these setups in their basements. But this is not like the track where Scale Electrics is slotted together, is it? No, this no is it's all routed car. out this is one round, board. This is out of MDF. Yes. Yeah. And it's obviously got copper tape as a contact. Show us the vehicles. Oh. So we have a Ferrari. Have you seen the film yet, Pete? And a Maserati. You haven't seen Ferrari yet. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then I think that's a Connell. If you don't know, Pete sometimes helps us out with <laughs> some of our videography <laughs> and photography on the channel when I'm not here. <laughs> Pete jumps in. Yeah. Very smooth, isn't it, compared to scale electrics? Yeah. You've got that join heavy. No, the clunk clunk the no. corrugation. Yeah. They go faster than that, or is it? Um, well, I've got it on the six volt, you see, which is oh, right. normally at about 15. But you don't get a current drop with the copper tape that you get with the braid. So you get a current drop, so you find that it would be, this is where it's connected, and it'd be fast here, and it'd be slow over there. Mm -hmm. But you don't seem to get that, because you haven't got the same resistance. But it is a pain to do, of course. Okay, the A7. It did go back to the customer, but it's come back. Now, I'm gonna tell you why. Uh, we had a list of jobs to do on this bike, and as you remember, I said before that the story was that the guy that was restoring this passed away. The bike had been almost finished, but wasn't commissioned, wasn't on the road. Um, it was purchased by the present owner. He rode it to the guy's funeral, but it had issues not charging, fuel leaks, uh, forks are noisy. Anyway, we cut past that. It didn't have any fork oil. We put a new clutch in it. I'd done what I thought was the, the things that he wanted, the charging, we put a new voltage regulator in there. Um, he had the bike back and he said to me, he said when he's riding it, and it got hot, it would smoke a lot. And he said the side stand had come loose. And I said, well, that's very strange because on here on the side stand, the main lug is welded to the frame. This is the back lug. This forward one is just clamped on. Now. I did change the centre pivot bolt, as you can see here, because the guy that was doing the restoration, but a bolt through here was split pin at the back. I bolted this now through with a proper bolt that's threaded into the part of the stand and also has another lock nut behind so you can tighten up the tension on the clamp. We found out what happened was he'd been starting the bike on the side stand and you put a lot of leverage on that. Um, as far as the oil leaks, it wasn't so much an oil leak. The barrel here, uh, you may see now it looks a bit rusty. Before it didn't. It so turns out that it had been painted with a hammerite smooth paint. Now, I think most people know that it's not heat resistant. And when this engine got hot, that paint started to bubble. And the toxic smoke, it was smoking, not oil smoke, but it was smoking through the paint and literally I peeled this off. Now, 
when he came back with the bike, I said to him, we'll put it on the stand and we'll, we'll go for it. Okay, you've got an issue with oil leak. And I did notice we just had a little bit of weep on the rocker box gasket. I noticed some bubbles on the head gasket at the front. Now, it didn't come in for this. It came in for, say, for Pacific Work because this had been rebuilt by someone. And what I'm trying to say is sometimes you take a job on and you don't know how much has been done correctly. Although someone will say to you, it's all been done. I see this as like you take the baton, so it becomes your responsibility, somebody else's work. And this is what's so hard with doing classic bikes, anything really, you, you take for granted that somebody else has done it right. So I said, right, we'll stick it on the bench, we'll take the tank off, we'll take the rocker box off, we'll take the head off, because I could see there was obviously a bit of an air leak. And when we took the head off, I haven't got any shots of it really, but if you can imagine, I took the head off and put it on the bench. Now where the gasket would be, there was a lot of corrosion um, pitting. You could see where it was leaking. So unless I'd taken it down in the first place, but it didn't come in for that. Now this is where you're up against it a little bit. So I said to Glenn, I said, look, we'll put it on my surface plate. We put it on the plate with some uh, 220 grit paper and we lapped it, I lapped it for probably half an hour and got most of that out. And we put a very thin layer of well seal on the base of that, that head. And nailed that copper gasket, put it back on, pulled those head bolts down, because they weren't pulled down, those head bolts. And um, I say, with the paint, I started the bike up, got it hot, because obviously the guy went home, because it was too long a job to do in one day. And I peeled all the paint off, and that's what it was. It'd been painted with a paint that's not heat proof. Um, yeah, it's one of those things, it, it can be annoying, but you know, how far do you go sometimes when someone says, you know, you want Pacific things done? And in a way, this is why a lot of jobs, I feel you have to do the whole thing or nothing at all, um, because then it's your peace of mind. You know you've done it. If you go and do a certain amount of work on top of somebody else's work, how do you know that your work is gonna be okay because what's been done before may not have been done properly. And it's like this bottom end, how well has that been put together? Has the comrades been tightened up properly to the right torque? You know, it, where does it stop? So that's just, just one mention of how these jobs can be quite difficult sometimes. The, the thing that I'd mentioned to him before is that the main stand, the back wheel wasn't off the ground, so as it was in, I said, look, okay, I'll have a look at that. Now, what tends to happen, with, we'll show you on the um, Gold Star frame, is that the frame itself is the main uh, support for the main stand, and it pivots on two lugs. This, I'll show you in a moment. But it tends to wear the main stand uh, on kickstart side more than anything else, because a lot of leverage there. Stands can, they wear, and sometimes the, the angle, the stand itself becomes too, marf, too far forward. This one was the same. So what we've done to try and get it higher, we built the stand up. We'll show you a stand at the moment, which we'll make a reference to and you'll see. So we took this off, we bored out the stand. We've got some more metal, uh, a piece of rod, the right diameter, and repaired the frame uh, where the, the holes in the frame had elongated out. And now you can see we've got clearance, that's on carpet now, so we're off the ground now. If the wall's in contact with the ground, it makes it very unstable. So another little job that I was happy to sort out for him. But um, yeah, it's, it's some of these jobs, they, yeah, where do you draw a line sometimes? That was that one. Um, I think what we're talking about now, we, we should talk about the Gold Star, the DBD. Uh, 34 which we're doing at the moment you'll see here we've got the bare frame most important thing is to cap off anything that's likely to suffer with blasting um, this frame has been converted to uh, a taper bearings and the cone we call that the cone in there I can't get out um, so we cap it off it saves uh, any blasting material to get into the frame itself. Also, when if anything is painted, it saves threads being covered up. Like here, we've, we've blanked off various things here where the tank support goes. Um, 
So what I will mention now, because we've been talking about where the frame lugs are for the uh, main stand, we've had to build this side up here. These holes get quite elongated out. So it's a thing you always want to do before you send your frame off and get it powder coated or painted. Make sure that everything is in good order. Don't go and go and get, get don't go and get this painted, then realise afterwards you've got to do something about it because you want to do this before it's painted. So that now is correct. If we take the stand, this is where they can typically wear. This is a gold style uh, main stand. It's different from a um, anything like an A10 one. And on the one I just showed you on the A7, we've had to build up here quite a bit because this was going too far over. So by building that up, it, uh, it has improved the ground clearance. This one was twisted. We have one of the legs twisted, and I'll try to get that back now, and one was splayed out. And I think that's come back fairly well. So frame is there ready. We'll just put that back the right way. You can see there's quite a lot of corrosion on the bottom part of that frame. So come around this side. So the swing arm, we mentioned about taking out the, the silent block rubbers. Again here, we've, we've made sure they, they can't get any uh, grit in here or any paint because we've got to put the new bushes in here afterwards. So seal that up properly. We have one, I'll put some bolts in here because I don't want the threads getting filled up with paint. We have one of these that was badly damaged. It was this one here. And you'll see here, I've, I've done an insert and I've got some pictures and you can see how I've done that. Basically, I use a half inch UNF uh, bolt. I tap this out oversize in here. In the center of that bolt, I will bore the center out and turn it out to 5 16 cycle thread. That's uh, 24 TPI uh, threads per inch, uh, 26, sorry, and tap that. But the bolt itself, I use the end of the bolt, the shank of the bolt. When it gets to the last thread, I usually put a bit of Loctite when I put this insert in, it's locked in place. Normally you leave that about half inch long, so it's got a good depth of adjustment. So when the bolt is wound in, in or out, it's got a lot of support. So we've got 16 items to be um, cleaned, blasted, painted. Uh, we don't send everything away. This is not full restoration. We're just doing really, between uh, full restoration and a recommission in a way. The bits that are really bad, like you can see here, this is like the cover for the front uh, engine mount, battery tray, fork legs, shrouds, a rear headlight assembly, uh, front shell. Now, this is the back brake, brake plate. This is chrome at the moment, and the customer, he's, he's, doesn't want a concourse bike. So what we have done with this, be blasted, be etched and painted black, which should be fine. He's not looking for a show winning bike. We showed you before, we showed you the battery box, the toolbox. We showed you that that is a curved um, cover. And we showed you before a flat sided oil tank. Now we've managed to get the correct one. We have got a slight dent here, so that will have to be done. But that is the correct oil tank that goes with that battery box. So it will look right. Now, these items here, front mud guard, rear mud guard and the stays, we're going to replace all this because these aren't the original. They are pattern parts. I think I showed you before, the chrome isn't very good. And the cost of re-chroming is going to be more expensive than buying new. So we can get all those bits there replaced with new parts. Because you can see on here, the rear mud guard, as I showed you before, there is a lot of rust in here. And to be honest with you, you know, it's not worth having that re-chromed. Because of rust, you're not going to get it all out. We've got new transfers for the, the bike. So the company's called uh, Classic Transfers. They will supply, and see here, most of the transfer for most bikes. And what would be quite nice with this one is we have the correct transfer. As you can see, like here, we have uh, the coat of arms, BSA, and it should be on the bottom here, 500cc. So we've got everything correct. So we've got the badges for 
the rear light for toolbox, oil tank, we got the um, oil level that goes on the oil tank, which is not on this one. And there's like a little um, trade thing on the top there. We're also gonna put on the frame, made in England as well. So it's just a little bit of detail, really. We're gonna just tidy the wheels up. I haven't spent any time yet because it's gonna be a quite expensive job anyway. But these, these, I think you saw the last time, they look quite scabby. I've only had a quick clean up. We'll do the drums, we'll tight up the paintwork, we'll tidy it up. The rear hub itself, that's fine, just wants a bit of tidying up. We have new tires on here, we'll put on the road riders. The engine, right, in this box, we've got to send this off to Phil, because we mentioned about the mag platform in the crankcase. So I'll put both halves of the crankcase together for, for transport. So I've taken out the long bolts out the crankcase. So that's been now, everything's packed nice and steady. So the mag platform's got to be welded up. Uh, new main bearings have got to go in. I've taken all the old ones out. He's going to make the crank, so then he can actually offer the crank to the crankcase, make sure it's all done correctly. Uh, this side we got, we got the head, underneath we've got the barrel. Um, the idea of this is going to be cleaned, because here, put this in his process and it'd be nice and clean when it comes back. Gonna put new valve guides in here, new valves. The barrel's gonna be reboard that's underneath the head here. So this is very similar work to what we had done on um, Ian's bike recently, the BB Gold Star. Here, sent him this because if he puts a crankcase together, and I think I mentioned about, make sure if you ever, when you come to rebuild one of these, you put in your, your main clamp for your mag dyno because it's it's fixed in the center here on this main bolt the two halves of it you've got one here and one underneath so yeah in here we just got like valve springs and collets and we're waiting for some main bearings to go in this box then it can be sent off so that's where we are with that job at the moment so it's it's really i think all the little bits now have been sorted we know we can send it off and get that painted and while i'm away hopefully that can be done so when i come back we can start building the bike back together. The gearbox, we're, we're sorting out the main shaft, as you know, which way we go, whether we replace the shaft or whether we just convert it to the sleeve gear to bushes. Um, we've mentioned about our project bike, where we are with that, because um, you haven't seen that for a while, any progress on that. You've seen the frame, where we are with the frame, and we've got the gearbox in, and we've got the footrests that have been heated and bent out, so they're the right shape. But what we had, and when we took this apart, we mentioned about the Norton Road Holder forks. So I'll get a bit of time between this job now. I'll pull these apart, and we can get some new parts of these. We're gonna use these. We're gonna try and keep as much of what the project was when it came in, and make it the best of what we got. We're not gonna spend a fortune on this because I think we should do it in a way that most people can afford to do it themselves. So as you'll see over here, I was gonna have this sent off and blasted. I decided like the rear hub, stick it in my cabinet and blast this, took the paint off. And what I've done here, and it, it's good paint actually, I've used an engine paint, okay? So I've blasted that in the cabinet. I sprayed this with an engine paint when it was warm, only slightly warm, and stuck it in the oven and baked it. That's been done twice. That's given them a good finish. This is a front hub. And because it's cast iron and aluminium, the two together, I've just done this silver. A lot of these were painted in the day anyway, but I think it's, it's, it's good, it's okay. We're putting new bearings in. Now what we've done here, these are the uh, bearing holders. We've polished these up, tidied these up. Uh, we've got a pair of bearings there are okay, but the back one, I need a pair of new bearings. I've got one to take as a pattern. So once they're built up, I'll probably stick this in the lathe and, and skim this um, uh, drum out because it's got a slight bit of wear. We just skim that out, but it's much better. So what we got going on here, um, we might as well mention this. So I took the QD hub apart and really the only thing that's really badly worn is the sprocket. 
we mentioned about teeth becoming very sharp. You get a lot of movement with the chain on the sprocket. I'm going to replace that. We've put, these are what we had in the, the bike when it came here, the engine, the high compression pistons. We've now put in the lower compression pistons, which are the right size. And these are 40 oversize. And the, hone the barrel out. The pistons are good. Rings are good. It's all been painted again in the oven. The head, I put it in my blast cabinet because I've taken the guides out and we just blasted this. And it's okay um, because a lot of people haven't got the money to send it all off and have it aqua blasted. So we've just done a very quick job. So be new guides in here. Then we've put the valves in. We'll recut the valve seats and we do the, um, do the valve faces on our machine. So that's quite straightforward work. So that's moved on a little bit now. Rocket box taking all this, take the spindles out, clean them all up, put them all back together again. And that's good. So that's there. Um, oh, there's one thing I want to mention to people. Now, I noticed in one of the comments recently, someone mentioned about the Cush drive and that if you have M float on the crankshaft, the float's taken up by the Cush drive. I just want to mention to people that, that actually isn't quite true. Uh, now, this is off of um, the DB34 that we're doing, replacing this, this crankshaft. Now, the bearings sit on the stubs close to the flywheel um, flanges here. This is where your bearings fit both sides here. This Cush drive doesn't take up the slack. It doesn't pull up at all on the bearings or anything at all. But just take this off. I'll show you. Now if you look at the crankshaft itself, this is the adapter that goes onto the crankshaft. This slides onto the crank. It stops there. It doesn't go up and pull the crank back. It sits, here's the splines in here. You'll see the splines there, and it has sit up on the end there. So that sits in there like that. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take my Goldie outside because we need the reference for the transfers so we don't get this wrong. It's so important to get the transfers in the right position because if they're not right, you can't redo it because they'll be lacquered afterwards. So we're getting outside and that will be really the end of what we're doing today. So I think we've covered most of where we are with the bike now. Um, we've got a list of new parts and uh, most of that is gonna be turning up very soon. So really that's about it for today really.